Hello again and welcome to Down Wide Books, the book review channel where we add insights into the worlds of literature for both those who do read and those who don't. It's been far too long. Today's book was a little bit more intense than I first expected, but nonetheless it offered quite an insight into our modern and ever-evolving society. Today I'm reviewing The Candy House by Jennifer Egan. The Candy House is the latest novel to be released by the American novelist and Pulitzer Prize winner Jennifer Egan. Egan is most notably known for her work A Visit from the Goon Squad, released to much critical acclaim in 2011. You may be surprised to know that I've not read that book. That may be even more puzzling considering The Candy House is considered to be a sequel, although one I'd heard was loosely connected with the first, but we'll have more on that in a second. The Candy House is a book very different to the kind you may be used to. It starts at one place and switches straight to another in nearly every preceding chapter. This change can be with the characters, the time period, the location, or even the writing style as a whole. Make no mistake, this book likes to jump about a lot, and to those who like a more linear narrative, this effect may be jarring. The constant change leads to a very wide breadth of characters. In fact, thinking upon reflection, I wish I'd jotted them all down because there are many links throughout this book that tie different people together, some obvious and others not. There are so many characters, it would be very difficult for me to name them all in this video, and in all honesty, such little time is spent with them that I can only remember a small handful off the top of my head. The book centralises around the invention of a technology called Own Your Consciousness, a form of data collection whereby a user uploads their whole consciousness in an effort to reserve who they are and to starve off against later brain damage. They can relive memories long past and experience the true emotion they felt before and after, not that of a fading and ever-changing memory that may be recalled differently so many years later. The people are still themselves, they just go about life in, in a way we normally would, but their consciousness is uploaded somewhere else. The invention itself offers a completely unique insight into the lives of others and allows people to access both their own and other people's past consciousness. This in turn leads to some truly unique perspectives in relation to experiences between parties. Memories you may think were enjoyed with, with yourself, for example, and another may actually be clouded by your one-sided perspective. It's data mining push to the extreme. However, the manner in which this story is told is often spread so far apart it would be hard to conceive this work as a whole. At times, it seems far more comfortable being a smaller set of short stories than a full-fledged novel. These stories are certainly written well, but come about one after the other and change so dramatically you can find yourself lost in a wash of pages. At its core, The Candy House is a science fiction work that stays somewhat within the confines of our modern technology. It doesn't go too far into the future. This future in Egan's work is mostly an evolution to that of our own modern day and hopes to discuss the repercussions of our technology essentially being put on steroids. However, the style of this book, it felt too disconnected for me to properly engage with it. A lot is spoken of, but each part is like a new island in a vast ocean, and this leads to characters not standing out, but instead fading to the background. I understand this book is meant to represent the lives of many people, each experiencing the positives and negatives of such a society, and the almost unavoidable technology that hangs above it. Yet, whilst this effect serves well to demonstrate the many different perspectives at play, it leads to a slightly frustrating reading experience. I'd stated earlier that a few early readers had claimed you did not need to read Egan's previous work, the prequel to this book, A Visit from the Goon Squad, to understand what is happening, and although that statement is true, I feel a lot of the impact this book may have had, particularly towards the end, was lost on me. It is clear, having looked at the reviews after finishing this book, that there are many characters who make appearances and one section by which multiple people from the preceding book play a part. Although this section, a part of continuous email chains back and forth between multiple people, 
was one of my favourite sections. I sense I had, if I'd read the previous work, if I'd read that, the impact of this would have been so much greater. There are parts in this book that kept me turning the pages, a section telling the trials and tribulations of an undercover agent, all of which was written in second person, was a particular highlight of mine, but this was quickly lost in preceding pages. I wanted more, but I just didn't get it, and although this section is picked up again at the end, the constant changing of characters and narrative didn't work for me, and thus the underlying message to me it felt lost and frustratingly difficult to discover. As a series of short stories, I felt this book worked well, but as a standalone novel there was too much going on and simply not enough consistency. This led to a reading experience that had multiple highs and multiple lows. So with all things considered, I would rate The Candy House a 6 out of 10. The quality of writing certainly isn't my issue here, it was the constant change that I felt blurred what the author was truly wanting to say. My friends, thank you for sticking with me through another book review. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get through this book. Life, uh, life does that sometimes, as we all know. Uh, if you would like to know what I'm reading next week, it's a new book, and I'm hoping to read this a lot quicker than this book. It is the new book by Blake Crouch, which is called Upgrade. Uh, I have no idea what that's about, to be honest. I haven't read the back. That may be my undoing. It sometimes is. But um, his last book that I'd read, I really enjoyed. So I think I reviewed it on this channel, actually. Check that one out as well. If you'd like to know anything further about the books I've spoke today, indeed the one I'm reading next week or the one I've just reviewed, then please see the video description with links where to get the books and further information. And follow me on Goodreads, please, if you will where all my reviews are also posted and you can see what it is I'm reading and you can tell me off if I'm not reading quick enough. <laughs> my friends, I hope everything is going well in your life and I thank you very much for sticking with me for a few minutes today to review another book. I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.